Hello, I'm Dr. Chung Hyun Park. Understanding abutments in prosthesis is very critical because it takes a lot of time and money to repair the prosthesis on the implant that is already placed. In order to avoid the hassle, we need to clearly understand what abutments are and how to choose the right ones. Today, let's find out uh, how we can deal with it. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about what abutments are, what the Austin's stuck abutment, the transfer abutment is, and also what to consider in choosing the abutments. First, what is an abutment? As you can see, the abutment is a transmucosal part that connects the fixture and the prosthesis. Here, they are indicated with the arrows. Now, can you understand what abutments are? Usually, they are connected to the fixture with a screw and connected to the crown via cementing. Let's have a look at the Austin stock abutment, the transfer abutment. Uh, transfer abutment is the most widely used one among the stock abutments. There are five main components in the stock abutment. First, let's have a look at the platforms. For fixtures with the a uh, diameter of 3.5 or less, a mini platform abutment can be used. Uh, that is, abutment platforms can be selected depending on the fixture diameter. Regular platform abutments are used for fixtures with a diameter of 4.0 or above. For mini platforms, long screws are used with up to 26 newton centimeter torque, according to the manufacturer's instruction. In the meanwhile, for the regular platforms, up to 36 newton centimeter torque is used according to the manufacturer's instruction. This is a case uh, used in the anterior mandible. The transfer abutment is connected and modified with a burr as if the abutment is prepared before the final prosthesis is completed. The regular platform is used for fixtures with a diameter of 4.0 or above. That is, the platform is compatible for all fixtures with a diameter ranging from 4.0 through 7.0. The final prosthesis is completed using the transfer abutment without modification. Next, we need to consider connections. Connections can be divided into the hex type and the non-hex type. As you can see, the hex type has the shape of a hexagon. On the right hand side, the non-hex type is not shaped like a hexagon. The biggest advantage of hex type is that it can be repositioned, and it is mainly used in the single tooth restoration. Now, can you see the hex type with the shape of a hexagon? On the other hand, the disadvantage of the non-hex is that it cannot be repositioned as there is no hex structure, but it has many advantages. The biggest problem in using the hex abutment is that the hex mismatch can occur, which is the incorrect connection. A clinician can easily make a mistake as the screw can still be tightened even with the mismatch. Now, here, can you see the hex mismatch? Can you tell the difference between the mesial and distal implants? If you see a connection gap on the x-ray, there is a lot of space below the screw. If you get skilled in reading the x-ray, you will detect uh, the hex mismatch easily. The right x-ray shows proper hex connection. As the first abutment hex was not connected properly with another stock abutment, hex is properly connected again. 
for non hacks, there is a positioning difficulties, but there is another advantage almost no chance of making the hex mismatch, which is the biggest advantage. There is less room for making a mistake, and it has higher contact area with the fixture, so the life is longer according to research results. Let's look at a clinical case. Over time, the contact is lost. Um, due to the type of the prosthetics, it was easily removed. Can you see the hex form indicated by the arrow? At a lab, the contact was modified and using the hex structure, the abutment was repositioned easily. If the abutment was a non-hex type, repositioning would have been very difficult, but it was a hex abutment. The repositioning was made pretty easily, and the modification of contact was done, and after that, re-cementation was done. Proper contact with the adjacent tooth was recovered. For non-hex type, transfer jig is necessary to reproduce the locations. The red structure here is the jig. Let's look at a clinical case for a non-hex abutment to transfer the locations on the model to the mouth. The red structure, the transfer jig is necessary. Through the transfer jig, the locations on the mouth is transferred to the mouth. Final prosthetics is completed. I keep the transfer jigs in charts like this. Otherwise, uh, they will be accumulated and it will be hard to find for a specific individual, so I prefer to attach them to the chart like this. It is retained like this because later, if necessary, the transfer jig will be used to reposition the abutment. Considerations when choosing an abutment Diameters of abutment range from 4.0 to 7.0. Depending on situation, proper diameter should be chosen. For the lower anterior region, small one would be chosen, and as you go towards the posterior region, wider diameter abutment would be chosen in general. As you can see in this case, in the case of premolars, I usually use 4.5 to 5.0 millimeters. For molars, I usually use 6.0 to 7.0 millimeters. The root diameter of an implant abutment is significantly smaller than that of the natural teeth, so embrasure tends to widen naturally. However, if placement depth is deep enough and soft tissue condition is not bad, the right photo is modified with the Photoshop. It is not remade by me. The left one may be biologically not bad, but from patient's food infection and retention perspective, it is not good compared to the modified image with the Photoshop because embrasure will become too big. That is, if abutment diameter is too small, it can be not good. Also, if it is too wide, it is not good biologically as well. So you need to choose an appropriate abutment. On the left, a stuck abutment. The right one is one feet abutment. The customized what abutment form reproduced with Photoshop. Using one feet abutment is favorable in far more cases. When you choose an abutment, another consideration should be given to the height. If the abutment height is over 4 mm, no action is needed to prevent the prosthetics loss. However, if it is less than 4 mm like this, the customized abutment is fabricated to prevent the loss, groove formation and sand blasting will help. The key takeaway message of this lecture, consideration for abutment gingiva height. According to the 2014 COIR paper, the transmucosal sounding depth of an implant is 4.4 millimeters, about 1 millimeter longer than a natural tooth. 
According to 2001 Herman paper, two-piece platform matching neck biologic width is about 3.8 millimeters. In the past, I made a mistake in this case. Number 46 fixture was placed too shallow without uh, considering biologic width. If it were placed 1.5 millimeter below bone, uh, such bone loss would not have happened. To treat the perimplantitis, it is cleaned with a brush. Fortunately, the condition has been maintained for several years. Due to bone loss, biologic width is established and the condition has become stable. But I regret that it should have been placed a little deeper in the first place. Now, this is a very important point. If the soft tissue is thick biotype and is more than 4 mm like this case, it is desirable to place the implant at the bone level. But like this, if the soft tissue is thin, below bone, 3 to 4 mm below the soft tissue margin, the fixture top should be placed deeply. Then, the gingiva height, that is the cuff of about 4 mm is used uh, usually. I usually use a 4 mm cuff. I use a 3 mm cuff too, but uh, I use 4 mm cuff mostly. Regardless of the margin location, the definitive prosthesis form should be the same. For sub gingiva margin, the abutment diameter should be small and the prosthesis should be like a pulling up the structure for equal margin. Abutment size should be a little bit bigger. For supra gingiva margin, if you design it that way, as you reproduce the crown shape, the abutment diameter should get bigger and the shape of the crown should match that. Once again, the position of margin and the appearance of the definitive prosthesis are irrelevant. It means the shape of an abutment should vary depending on margin position. Uh, the most important takeaway of uh, today's lecture, an abutment is a structure connecting a fixture and a crown, but an abutment is also a protective film which prevents or a bacteria from entering bone. So the change of a height of 3 mm or above needs to be used. I prefer to use 4 mm. To do so, sufficient placement depth should be secured according to soft tissue. Also, avoiding too much tapering is very important. However, if you prefer too thin, small diameter abutment, the appearance of prosthesis will not be very good. So, reproduce, to reproduce appropriate appearance, appropriate abutment should be chosen or fabricated. A tooth shows various characteristics depending on its shape its relation with the surrounding teeth and dentition. After an implant is placed, an abutment is used to support the prosthesis. It would be actually impossible for such abutment to completely satisfy all the characteristics of each tooth. However, based on this lecture, what about choosing a right abutment according to a tooth? Enhancing patient satisfaction is upon you. And thank you very much for your listening.